for a progressive water wave state what is meant by its displacement now a displacement for a progressive water wave is the distance that this water wave is, will cover in a known direction from its equilibrium position Next, the amplitude. The amplitude is this maximum displacement of the particle. So it is the maximum displacement that the particle can cover uh, is known as the amplitude. Next, we have two coherent waves, X and Y. They meet at a point and superpose. The phase difference between the two waves at point is 180 degrees. So the waves are uh, opposite to each other at a point. So the difference, phase difference is a total flip of 180 degrees. Wave X has an amplitude of 1.2 centimeters and intensity I. Wave Y has an amplitude of 3.6 centimeters. Calculate in terms of I, the resultant intensity at the meeting point. So we know that the intensity is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude. I can use this information to find the resultant intensity at the meeting point, which means for resultant intensity, the corresponding resultant amplitude would be the difference between these two. Why? Because the waves are opposite to each other at 180 degrees. So if we have one as this, the other one is like this. So you have to, if this is x, this is y, then the amplitudes of the waves are added in this way. So if this is positive, this is negative. So the resultant amplitude corresponding to resultant intensity would be 3.6 minus 1.2 squared, which means that the ratio IR to I is then equal to 3.6 minus 1.2 squared divided by corresponding to I, it's wave x's amplitude which is whose intensity is i as 1.2 squared this gives you i r in terms of i as 4.0 i next monochromatic light is incident on a diffraction grating describe the diffraction of lights as they pass through the grating so we know when if i have a grating like this and I have some waves coming in, in this way, these waves will bend in a circular pattern and move in all directions like this, right? So this is what happens. This is called the diffraction, right? So what happens is as the waves pass through the slits, the waves spread into a uh, circular pattern in all directions. Next, a parallel beam of light consists of two wavelengths, 540 nanometers and 630 nanometers. The light is incident normally on a diffraction grating. Third order diffraction maxima are produced for each of the two wavelengths. No higher orders are produced for either wavelength. So only third order maxima is produced. Determine the smallest possible line spacing D of the diffraction grating. So this is a diffraction problem. The, the equation for diffraction is N lambda e uh, equals to D sine theta. N is the order of diffraction, lambda is the wavelength, and D is the line spacing, right? And these wavelengths are incident normally on the diffraction grating, which implies that the angle theta is 90 degrees. So we have N as 3, right? And we have the wavelength lambda as 630 nanometers. We have the uh, angle theta is 90 degrees we want d so d 
would be n lambda over sine theta. Now, the reason I chose lambda as 630 nanometers, because this, the, this wavelength is going to produce the smallest line spacing, right? So this corresponds to the smallest. So the bigger the wavelength, the smaller the line spacing. So they wanted us to have the smallest possible line spacing. So this would be 3 times 630 into 10 raised to power minus 9 divided by sine of 90, which is just 1. So this gives me d as 1.9 into 10 raised to power minus 6 meters or 1.9 micrometers. So d is 1.9 into 10 raised to power minus 6 meters. Now, the beam of light in C2 is replaced by a beam of blue light incident on the same diffraction grating. Stainin explained whether a third order diffraction maximum is produced for this blue light. So, the original wavelengths were what? Lambda is equal to, uh, they were 540 or 630 nanometers, right? The blue light has a higher energy and the wavelength of blue light is smaller it's very small right so it would be smaller it is smaller than 540 or 630 nanometers which means that the wavelength of this new blue light is smaller than the wavelengths of the original light that was initially incident so the third order diffraction can still be produced because we are still under the limit of the original wavelengths. And the original wavelengths were capable of producing a third order diffraction maxima. So hence, if, we, if blue light is under those wavelengths, then it will also be able to produce the third order diffraction maxima. So you say that the wavelength of blue light is less than of the original wavelength hence a uh, third order diffraction maxima is observed 